Hi. Now in this question what we've got to do is work out some constants and we've got f of x equals 1 over x times 3x minus 1 all squared and we're told that it equals a over x plus b over 3x minus 1 plus c over 3x minus 1 all squared and we've got to find the values then of these three constants a, b and c. So if you'd like to uh, give this question a go if you haven't done it already just pause the video come back when ready and you can check your work solution with mine okay welcome back if you had a go and let's see how you got on well first of all what I'd want to do is copy out the question and to save time I've just done that already and then what we do is we multiply both sides by the denominator here. Multiply both sides, in other words, with x times 3x minus 1 all squared. And so what happens is that that will just leave us with 1 here, and then we would multiply each of these terms by x times 3x minus 1 all squared. And again, I've done that for you just to save time. And so what happens now is that we can cancel out that x with that x, we can cancel out 3x minus 1 with one of the 3x minus 1's here. And then 3x minus 1 all squared will go into the 3x minus 1 all squared there. So if we tidy this up, we therefore have 1 is identical to, and notice how I've written an identical sign. It's not really an equation here. So really we shouldn't use equals. In my opinion, it should be an identity, and that's what I'm going to use. So 1 is identical to a multiplied by 3x minus 1 all squared. And then we've got plus b times x times just 3x minus 1 and finally c times x. Now to work out what a, b and c are we need to generally make one or more of these terms equal to zero. What we want to do is avoid simultaneous equations. Strictly speaking you could put any value of x into here being an identity and then you could just get equations up and you could solve them simultaneously. But if we can avoid simultaneous equations, it's a good idea. And we can do that by choosing, say, x equal to a third. That will take out this bracket here, because this would be 3 times a third, which would be 1. And 1 take away 1 would give us 0. So that term would go. And likewise, this term would go if x was a third. But this term wouldn't, and it would allow us to find c. So that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to say when x equals a third. And so when x equals a third, we therefore have 1 on this side. And it now turns into an equation, so it's just putting an equal there. And uh, this term goes then, as I said earlier, this goes to 0, this bracket would have b times a third times 0, which is 0. And then we'll have c times a third there. c times a third is like saying c over 3. So if we multiply both sides here by 3, you get 3 equals c, or therefore c equals 3. So there's one of your constants up already. OK, c equals 3. Next. I can choose another value for x that will take out some terms, and that would be x equals 0. That would take out this term here, because you'd have b times 0 times essentially minus 1. Well, that would be 0. This term would be c times 0. That would go. So it would leave us with this term, which we could work out a from. So let's say when x equals 0. When x equals 0, we're going to have 1 here. OK, we we'll therefore have 1 equals. So 3 times 0 is 0. That leaves us with minus 1 all squared, which is 1. 1 times a is just going to be 1a, or a. OK, so therefore a must equal 1. All right, so we've got that one there. Now to work out what b is, 
I've run out of values of x that are going to make any of these terms zero. So what I can do now is say choose another value for x. I could say when x equals, oh I don't know, what can we have? We could have one say, that's quite a nice easy number to work with. So we'll say when x is one, but you can use any value you like because this is an identity, so it's gonna be true for all values of x. So when x is 1, what have we got? We've got 1 here, so therefore 1 equals, and put 1 into this bracket here, we've got 3 then, minus 1 which is 2, square it and you've got 4. 4 times a, let's just put 4a. For the next term, if x is 1, we've got b times 1, well that's just going to be b, and then here 3 times 1 is 3, take away 1 is 2. So you're going to have b times 1 times 2, so it's going to be plus 2b. And then finally, if x is 1, we just get c times 1, so that's plus c. Now we know the values of a and c, so if we substitute those values into here, we've got 1 equals 4 times 1 for a, which is 4. We don't know b, so that's going to be still 2b. We know c is 3. Simple equation now, so we've got 4 plus 3, which is 7. Take 7 from both sides, you've got 1 take away 7, which is going to be minus 6 and that would equal 2b. And so from there, it follows that b, if we divide both sides by 2, b must equal negative 3. So there you go. That's one way of getting b. Now, this is not the only way of getting b. You've got other ways that you can do this. You could compare coefficients. So let's just explain how you could do that. If we just say coefficients, let's say we compare coefficients of x squared. And if I compare coefficients of x squared, over here I've got no x squared terms. I've just got this constant 1. So therefore I've got 0 on the left equals. Now if I was to expand this bracket I'd have 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. So I've got 9x squared times a, so that's 9ax squared. So the coefficient of x squared would be 9a. So we've got 9a there. This one would be bx times 3x. That will give me 3bx squared. So the coefficient of x squared there would be plus 3b. And for this last term, there is no coefficient of x squared, only a coefficient of x, which was c. So, no coefficient of x squared in the last term. Now, I know that a is 1, so we've got, therefore, 0 equals 9 times 1, which is 9, plus 3b. And you can see that if you rearrange this equation, we would therefore have 3b equals minus 9. Divide both sides by... 3, and you again end up with b equaling minus 3. So with questions like this, the best way you can do them is to experiment, okay? It's good to get values of x which take out the terms, okay? Leaving you with one term that you need to find the constant in. But if you then start to run out of values of x that will take out terms, you can choose any term or you can compare coefficients. It's up to you. All right? So I hope it's given you some idea anyway on how, how to go about this and how I've approached the problem anyway. Okay?